<clears throat> Hello, beautiful. Welcome to the United Way. This is our preview: Manchester United versus Aston Villa, which will, die, by the way, be tomorrow at Old Trafford. So, guys, for those of you who would love to express express yourself during the game, we invite you on our watch along. We'll be live here on the studio, so get involved with the United Way. And yeah, so Manchester United, we are back from a very disappointing game against Tottenham Hotspur, where we were two goals. Um, Ahead in the first half and the second half, they I would just say they they <clears throat> they bottled it. They bottled the game. United had to win that game at least three goals to whatever. But anyway, I think uh, it's uh, it, it's history now. But we need to look forward. United we're hosting Aston Villa, a team which is in form, a team who has won their last four games, a team which I would say Emre has done a very good job with them in terms of the way tactically the way they play. The way Villa plays a little bit, it's they're very they have a very offensive way of play. They play a lot with the flanks. So when you understand they play a lot with the flanks and they are very good on their build on play, what they do, they are they are a reactive team, right? They are a reactive team. So we will have to be on our game in order to win them. The only good news here in that game is we are playing in Old Trafford, and you know, United, while we are very bad playing away from home, because we are basically I mean, in many ways, you can say the Tottenham game was a good game because we didn't lose because we have lost with all the top, all the top six, seven teams. We haven't beat them in, in um, a away game. So, but uh, the good news is we are very good in Old Trafford, and uh, this is what I think. Before we start, guys, please make sure you click the like on the video. Thanks for all of you liking this video. You're helping the content. As I said, I wanted to uh, be part of our preseason in the US, but you know, it seems as if it's not going to work. I wanted to get. 10,000 subscribers in this channel so you guys um, could get uh, direct footage from uh, what's going on with the team but well this is uh it, it won't work but let's go on straight with what we will do um so um yeah as i said united uh this is a new challenge for united because it's another game and united must really win this game for those of you who uh, are very worried about our chances for top four i would say our chances are more or less okay and um yeah, and the way we approach this game has to determine a lot. I'll put it this way. If United doesn't beat Aston Villa, then I become start, I'll start getting worried because our next two games we play against uh, Brighton away, West Ham away. I think I said that earlier. But so what would Ten Hag do? What should Ten Hag do? And I would like you guys to get involved, guys, to, and answer this question. What should Ten Hag do? Put your lineup below because that, that's why I always put an empty table here for you, the fans, to drop your lineup. And if you want to win, uh, because we do a giveaway, if you want to win one of these, let me just be putting, let me wear this and you see how beautiful it is. So uh, if you want to win one of these, uh, draw your lineup, try to uh, predict Ten Hag's lineup. Share this with your family and friends. It will be helpful if you have to have three options and just having one and losing from one player. So I want to tell you guys my lineup and tell you how the way we share our approach. The last game we played, there were some issues with Aaron Wan Basaka. Maybe because he's not a very communicative guy, he, he, he didn't express himself, but he wasn't 100% sure. I gave, I, I, I mean, Luke Shaw almost for me had to be the man of the match, but I gave it to Bruno against Total Mospo. But I think our central back has been doing really well in the absence of our real, um, the real uh, central backs. In um, you know, you know, uh, Luke Shaw particularly has been fantastic. So I'll go in the defense. Let me just tell you the goal with that there will be the gear, David the gear for me. Two central backs will be Lindelof and um, yeah, will be Lindelof and Luke Shaw. Then on the left we will have. Uh, Dalo should play at the left. I'm not worried about Malaysia of late. On the right, I will still start with I will still start with Aaron Wambasaka. And by the way, I've asked most of you about Aaron Wambasaka. Should United sell you know, Aaron Wambasaka? And 92% said no, they shouldn't. Most of our community, which we have, um, I would say, it's, uh, almost 50% of our community are uh, in the African continent. And um, yeah, and. Haruman Basaka has been doing well. Delo is about to get a new contract. We know of uh, Ganacho who signed a new contract yesterday, a five years deal. But the thing is that United is searching for another, for another defender, you know, another the defense right back or left back. We've heard about um, Frimpong. We've heard about yesterday. I, I did a video here telling you guys also about uh, a certain Brazilian 
who is uh, Fad Monaco, which United are looking very closely on the way he plays. I think Ten Hag wants to play a very offensive game. Ten, the future of Manchester United, Ten Hag would love to be playing um, a very a domi uh, dominative football, a football where the players control the game. We might lose, we might win, but the truth is that Ten Hag wants to win dominance in terms of the way he possesses ball, he possesses the game. So the two central back for me, you know what? Uh, we can try something different. I don't know if it's going to work, but because we have to win this game even in the first half. We have to be two goals up in the first half. But I'll go with Casemiro, which is someone which has not been really good this is, since when he came back from his second yellow, yellow red card. But uh, he's the only one we have. Uh, he has been doing some mistakes. I hope he has a very good game. If Casemiro has a good game, I'll put it this way. If Casemiro has a good game, a fantastic game, then we are winning this game today. Because we have Ramsey, who is quite quick on the ball, and he's going to bring cost problems to Casemiro in terms of the way he speed. So Casemiro will have to be have a good game. Then I will pair. I would have loved to pair Casemiro with uh, with Ericsson, but I will pair him with um, Sabitzer. I think Sabitza is the person to pair with Casemiro. Why? Because we haven't seen this pair played a lot. I mean, maybe a few games, because uh, I will want that when we do our replacement, we bring in quality. One of the biggest problems we have with sports is that we, we didn't have quality coming into the pitch. And, you know, most of the, the biggest problem with game sports was not even the fact that we did replacement earlier, late. The biggest problem was that the players who came in did not meet up the expectations we were expected by you, the fans, and also the manager. So I think Sabiza should um, start the game with uh, Sabiza to start the game with, with um, uh, as I said, um, uh, the Brazilian uh, captain in Casemiro. And in front of them, Bruno, on my right, I'll stay with Antoni on the right. On the left, it will be Sancho and Marcos Rasho play as an attacker. I think we can manage that game properly with that such a lineup. And also, I think if we have to bring in players, maybe Marshall should come in for the last 15, 20 minutes. Because he's so lazy, we have to agree that Marshall is such a lazy player. He's a player which he can he can basically give people um, the fans heart attack. On his day, he's like Maradona, but uh, on the on the usual usual game, let's 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 face it, Marshall isn't good enough when he is uh, just Marshall. If you see what I mean, so uh, his 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 persona, his body movement isn't isn't exactly what um, the fans like, and that's an issue. But yeah, guys, that's my line. I'll drop your line up below and tell me if you are going to, if you are going, if you will be able to, to, to replicate or predict Ten Hag's lineup. This is the same thing. But I will, this is what I want. And if you do so, guys, follow us on our Instagram. You guys are following on our Instagram. We have our Facebook group, which is massively um, um, growing. We are heading to forty thousand subs. Uh, follow us on Facebook. So guys, join our Facebook group. It's very, very, very aggressive, and also uh, very interesting because we have a lot of fans there, different ideas. You can get breaking news. Talking about breaking news, you know, we're pretty much here as we are reading it. That's we are giving out these videos. Uh, uh, the last bit of owners of Manchester United have been placed. We know of what we know. Uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe wants. Uh, he wants to take a fifty percent. He has the money for that, and he wants to keep the Glazers on the twenty. Well, I did a video about it yesterday, trying to explain it at the very low level, local level, on way on how what is going on with Manchester United sale. So any ordinary fan can understand what is going, why he Manchester United is in sold yet. What happened? Watch that video. It is uh, on the channel. I did a stream yesterday which we had one of you here. And guys, please click the bell. So whenever I'm live, you will be, know I am live because I will be live a lot, especially in the sum, in the summer uh, for to give you guys breaking transfer news. And guys, I want to tell you this. Um, Sheikh, Jim, uh, uh, Sheikh, Sheikh uh, <coughs> Jasmine Jasim has uh, give, wants 100% of Manchester United and wants to change a lot, wants to cancel our debt and also want um, to 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 build that, uh, to rebuild or build a, a new stadium. I know those are two different words, but he wants United to have a good stadium. That's it. Let's don't complicate this thing. These are technical things by businessmen. Let's don't complicate it. I was very close with the idea. I was really 100% um, with the idea that uh, we should give uh, that the um, Manchester United should be owned by someone which is local. But 
I have come to that conclusion that we are the Nike of the world. We are the Doji Cabana. We shouldn't be be placed as it's not Manchester United. It's not an, a, a a country. It's a it's 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 a it's like a, it's it's a phenomenon. So it is loved by everybody. You have fan base in Africa. You have fan base around the world in Asia, in South America. So it is worth us not thinking who owns us. The problem of who can make us better. And uh, from now, I will put my my. Um, don't don't follow me. I will put my my bid on uh the Qataris open uh, owners because I think they will be helpful. We need an extremely wealthy person to to be the owner of Manchester United for several reasons, which we'll say then on that video. So guys, yes, um, meet you guys tomorrow on our uh, watch along, watch along when live every time United is playing, come to the channel. We'll have a chat, and after that, we'll do our player ratings. We get to know each other. You drop your comments. We actually we will be discussing as United fans, and yeah, have a lovely weekend, guys, and stay tuned. Talk to you soon.